Hey folks, now that most of you have been exposed to using functions in a program, uh, I just want to make sure that we actually understand what a function is. So let's start off with that. What is a function? A function is just one or more lines of code that can be reused. And here we can see uh, the definition of a function over here, and here we can see a function call. And I'm going to talk about those in more detail in just a second. The function definition, uh, this is where you define what a function is supposed to do. Um, and here, um, the function definition usually starts off with a, a def statement uh, and, uh, and then the name of the function and then any parameters for the function. In this case, there's just one and it's called points. And then what we do is we write all the lines of code that are part of that function definition. Now, after you create a function definition, it'd be really great if we could use it somehow. Um, a function call is how you call a function into action. The function definition is a little bit like a magic spell written on a page. The function call is what happens when you say the magic spell out loud. So in this case, we can see here's the function call, draw flower. After we've defined what draw flower will do, we must call it and give, uh, and give an, uh, an argument, and then, uh, and then the function will run, and, uh, and it will pass this argument into the function. Now, uh, the, obviously, to understand functions, you have to understand a lot of vocabulary. We've already mentioned function definition, function call, and uh, now we're going to talk about parameters. Um, so whenever, when you create the function definition and you write the, the name, after the name in parentheses are several things called parameters. Now, function definitions can have only one parameter, like you saw on the last slide, but it can have more than one parameter, like you see here, time left, home score, and away score. Those are parameters. Parameters provide a way to pass information into a function. And parameters are what make a function customizable. See, a function allows you to reuse the same lines of code over and over again. But without parameters, they would always do the same exact thing. With parameters, a function can be customized. Now, let's see how we use parameters in the function definition. Once we've established what our parameters are in, when, we, when we start the function definition, then we begin to write all the lines of code that make up the function. This is also part of the function definition. Now, what happens is, is that at some point in the code, we'd like to use these guys like time left, home score, and away score. In this particular function, um, there was actually a time that was uh, hard-coded into this line 12, and I've removed that time and replaced it with the parameter time left. Now, every time I go to run this function, I can pass in a new time, and it will be displayed using line 12. And uh, down here we can see, um, this is where you'll display the home team score. Well, that would be a great place to put home score. Right now, though, I simply have the number 42 there. And that's what we'll dis display every time I run this function. In order to make the function more useful, I'll replace that 42 with the home score parameter, just like I replace the time with the time left parameter. Now, the next definition or vocabulary word that we need to know regarding functions is arguments. Arguments are what you have when you have a function call. So when we go to call the function, like here, where we go to call the function scoreboard, we give it a, a, an amount of time that's left and a home score and an away score. And when we pass those pieces of information to the function, as long as the function is set up to receive those pieces of information, um, then those those pieces of inf those values. Let me see here. 
Uh, arguments are values that are passed into a function through its parameters. So these values will be fun passed into the function um, through the function definition parameters. Okay. Um, I believe that is most of what I wanted to talk about, but I, there is one last thing that I want to say it's kind of important. This last piece of information that I want to share is very important in making sure that your functions run correctly. Um, and uh, it says it all here. Lines of code in a function definition must be indented using the tab key. There's a whole lot going on in that sentence, okay? Um, first of all, you can see here, here is my function definition. It starts at line 3 and goes all the way down to line 19. And, and the definition always starts with def and then the name of the function and then the parameters and then a colon for Python, um, which is our programming language. Um, but all of the lines of code that we want to include in the function definition must be indented from where the def starts okay now when you go to indent you must use the tab key do not use a space key and do not over indent okay so so the end that you must have exactly one tab and it cannot be more and it cannot be less and you cannot use the space key if you stick to that rule then you'll have a function definition that works for you consistently all right, I think that that is the last piece of information that I feel that is critical to share with you about functions. You really need to know all of the items that I discussed in this video well. We will be using functions again and again and again, and the better that you understand how they work and the vocabulary of functions, uh, the better off you're going to be.